Welcome everyone. Another one of our Facebook Lives on Tuesdays, and I know that a lot of you watch it afterwards and ongoing, and we really appreciate that. But here we are on a Tuesday, sun's out, it's gorgeous in um, Kansas, even though it's a little cold. So last night I watched a PBS television show called Riveted, The History of Genes, and it was really interesting. So I'm hoping that those of you who follow documentaries and interesting stories like this on your local public television station will look for Riveted, because I think it'll be worth your time. It's not just about genes and fashion, but there's a lot of history of America, because as we know, genes are American, for the most part. We've, we are the ones who made genes famous, and they're just embedded in our culture. So it reminded me to go to my book archive and dig out my 20-year-old book called Blue Gene, The Blue Gene by Alice Harris. I love seeing photo photographs of famous people. I don't know why. I think it's interesting. And this is not only the history of the blue gene, but it's also a fantastic book of photography of all kinds of just fantastic photos of people in blue jeans, from very famous people to not so famous people. So it's the kind of book that 20 years old, I didn't really look it up, but I'm sure that it's the kind of book that you would get on the off market now. It might be kind of cheap. And if you're into photography, this is really a fun book about blue, jean, blue jeans. But today, we are not talking about denim. We're not talking about blue jeans. That was just an off story of what I watched last night that was really interesting. But we are talking about two new reintroductions of patterns that we had some time ago that were very popular. They were in print, and then they were discontinued when we were no longer able to print. And so now we have brought them back as download patterns. And one is the Spring Street shirt or blouse. I can't remember what we call it. Spring Street blouse. It's a good question, yes. And the other is the Tosca dress. So I have on the Tosca dress back up here a little bit and it's a really really interesting dress to wear and to sew because there's nothing very standard about it it has two cargo pockets right here deep pockets it has a couple of pockets up here interesting kind of funnel shaped cowl type neckline a, a large armhole so that you can wear something under it and then the hem is deep. It's about six inches deep. And when you fold the hem under, you shift it. So it creates this sort of bubble to the hem. It also has some tucks. So there's a lot going on in this dress. And it's fun to make in a plaid or something that's just going to look good when it's all turned and twisted. And, and, it, and it's, it's a great garment. Um, I'm wearing it over the Trio t-shirt, and the reason I picked the Trio t-shirt is that the, the Trio t-shirt does not have a set-in sleeve. So this particular arm's eye does come in off the shoulder, and so I didn't want another line here. And the Trio t-shirt has a smooth seam that starts across the shoulder and comes down the arm, and so there's no set-in sleeve. It's somewhat of a raglan sleeve and yet you can shape this to fit your shoulder really perfectly because of this particular seam. And because it's winter in Kansas, I am wearing a long sleeve t-shirt underneath it and I'm wearing it with leggings or yes, leggings. And I'm wearing it with little short booties. So it's the winter look for the Tosca dress. It's a great summer dress in wonderful cottons and of course because of this arms eye I think you can see it probably for sure on this. You can see how deep that is. You would want to wear a tank or something uh, underneath it. Short sleeve t-shirt, cap sleeve t-shirt, tank, long sleeve t-shirt, whatever. But I also like the Trio t-shirt underneath it because the Trio t-shirt is, first of all, it comes in a large range of sizes. It's a download pattern, but it's, it's slim fitting in the hips. So you don't have a lot of bulk inside of the dress. It's not like a super tight t-shirt, but it's definitely not the swing tee or something that has a lot of ease to it. Just, and the Trio t-shirt does come with a sleeve that is about three-quarter, 
more of a bracelet length sleeve. So I have it on in a, uh, a plaid, a, a lightweight wool plaid. I say wool, it may be cotton actually, I can't remember. And then this one that I brought in is a cotton sateen. Has a little strie pattern to it. I think you can see the details of this a little bit better with the two pockets here and the large pockets here that also have another little panel applique across the pocket. But everything about this dress is interesting, except the back, which is plain. So that's in a cotton. This one is in a plaid. This one is in a shirting cotton, a little blue and white striped shirting cotton. So this is the perfect summer Tosca dress. And then notice that we have faced this with a contrasting fabric, which is really fun to do. Because this does hang differently with every fabric. If you're making it in something that's very drapey, this is going to hang totally differently than in something that has a little more structure. I do think that the Tosca can be made in something that has some structure. Shirting is in cottons and lightweight denims even. Um, so hopefully you're into dresses. Everybody has to have a black Tosca dress. And here it is, solid black linen with a t-shirt trio t-shirt that has a print to it. Now this time, these tucks are not in the pattern. Or in, it's in the pattern, but it's not in the making of this dress. So normally this has some, some tucks that create this hitch to it, but you don't have to do that. You can leave it just plain. So either way, in fact, I think this is how we illustrate it, perhaps on the cover, as I recall without the, the extra pleats. So whatever you wear, you, you can have something that shows at the neckline or not. You know, it can be a scoop neck something, maybe some jewelry. I've worn it with just a, a nice little piece of jewelry just to sort of fill out the neckline. But um, there you go, Tosca dress. All right, the other pattern that we are reintroducing today is the Spring Street shirt or blouse. I was the one who wanted to bring this pattern back because I love this pattern. This pattern is nice because it fits a lot of people without a lot of fitting. It doesn't have to be over fit. The shoulder is slightly off of the shoulder. The sleeve is tapered but it's brought together at the wrist with a loop and a button. So that's always a nice profile when you have a nice roomy arms eye. The sleeve is nice and wide. For those of you who have a little more girth around your sleeve, this is perfect. I've never known anybody who had to adjust this sleeve for width. And yet when you bring it in as a taper, that's a nice profile. It's much more flattering. It has these nice big curved center fronts facing. And then this is its probably most unique feature, a collar that comes together at zero in the center back and then creates a lapel type collar that has this little circular cutout, which I really like. If you don't like this circular cutout, cut it straight across and have just a standard lapel collar. Either way, it has some really unique features. I liked putting big buttons on it as something to feature. This is made out of a rayon crepe, so it's very drapey. But this can be made in anything. It can be made in cotton. It can be made in wool. I have a velvet one somewhere in my closet. I couldn't find it this morning. But uh, I've made it in a, a number of different fabrics. But I think that you'll really like this. This, this neckline is pretty. It's a V-neck not too low, not too high. You can wear a little necklace with it or something, but you don't have to because this is interesting on its own. So Spring Street and Tosca Dress are the two patterns that we're talking about today. So I want to talk about a couple of the details of this Spring Street. So as I pointed out, the bottom of the center fronts of the Spring Street blouse have these deep curves. And I don't know about you, but when I was growing up and taking seventh grade home economics classes, when we sewed this curve, we were told to clip the curve 
and create little notches. Well, when you do that, you get a jagged curve because those notches just show. So later on, I determined that the best way to actually clip a curve is to trim it way down to about an eighth of an inch. So you keep the trimming straight for the straight portion of the seam, and then when it starts to curve, you start to trim it in. This one's just a tiny little sample that I had. This one is bigger, and you can see that this one, which is nice and ravelly now, because I've turned it so many times, but that's the trimming technique on that curve. And the way to really get this smooth then, you understand that this is now on the bias, so this little seam is going to mold. And the perfect tool to press this curve over is the curve of a tailor board. There are lots of different curves on this. This would be a curve for a small curve like this. Here's an even smaller curve. And of course, this one and then the more gentle curve here. So there's some place on this tailor board that's going to be the perfect place to press the seam open first. That's the secret. Trim it down small. Finger press it if you have to. This happens to be linen, so of course that's pretty easy to just come along and finger press. And then of course you would press these seams open as well, these straight ones that come into it. And then when you turn it, it's perfectly smooth. So don't do the little notched trimming anymore. Those days are gone. Now this shirt also has, since we've got the camera kind of close here, we'll show a little close-up of this loop and button. So the loop is inserted in the seam, and the idea is to get as small of a loop as you can. So I have taken some bias cut fabric, it started out as an inch wide, and I've sewn it with right sides together, pretty narrow, and I'm going to use a tool that's called a, ball, a ballpoint bodkin. So it has an eye at the top and a ball at the bottom. And I'm going to put the ball end of that through that fold, next to the fold, until the eye is hidden. Then I'm going to take some polyester thread, and I'm going to actually sew through that loop, or the whole, the eye of the ballpoint bodkin. Wrap it around a few times, and then even wrap it more to get that nice and narrow at the top. Tie it off, cut it off, and so now you can begin to shove this, and I meant to grab a uh, uh, ripper because I like to actually, we'll pretend this is a ripper or some kind of sharp point. See I knew this would happen, I sort of dreamed about this last night that my, um, my demo would stall out because I wouldn't be able to get this to do this. <laughs> Go get me a ripper. <laughs> I've got this pretty small, I have, to I have to tell you. Once you get it started, it is a piece of cake. This is like the zipper last week. Was it last week, Erin? Yeah. yeah, boy, howdy. I've got this so tight on here. Okay, so much for selling this technique. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, guess what? I'm not going to bore you with this. Um, but all, once you get it started over the top, it just slides right through, and I can't make it happen. You're going to ruin the ripper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ruin the ripper. That's why you cut this extra length in case you have to fiddle with this and cut it and slash it and make it happen. 
Oh, I know people are laughing at home, you know, this is the way it goes. Okay. It's not going to happen. All right, we'll move on. You got the idea. It really is a cool tool. Um, I've made that a little too skinny at that. Uh, we normally tell you to sew a little funnel at one end to make it a little bit bigger, and that's what I should have done, and I didn't. So there you go. Uh, curves and uh, the, the nice thing about that ballpoint bodkin actually, when it works, is that you can go forever. So granted, you only need two short loops for the two sleeves of this Spring Street, but if you need long tubes, that this is the tool that really works. And it's anchored, and it's not gonna break on you like some of the other ones. I own all the other tube turning things that ever existed, and this really is the one that I use all the time. Okay, um, let's talk about some fabric. Um, I, think, I pulled some fabrics that I think are really suitable for either the Tosca dress or the Spring Street. And I started with plaids because I have a plaid on, and you can see, I think, how this plaid is really interesting in a Tosca dress, but it would also be great on the Spring Street, too. So just because I'm showing him kind of for Tosca's Think Spring Street. Start at the bottom here. Um, this is a, uh, a blend of rayon and cotton, and it's a very classic uh, green and blueberry blue, and I don't know whether it's navy or black, to tell you the truth. It might be black. Uh, but it's a plaid, it's an even plaid. So really the only places you have to match the plaids are at the side seams on this. I think because the pockets are set in such a way on the angle and the, and the tucks on the front of this Tosca that you don't have to worry about matching those. In fact, I think it'd be more interesting if you don't. Um, but matching plaids sometimes is intimidating to people. And for those of you who are taking the February So Confident Series 11 class on making the Hudson pants. I talk about matching plaids in the cutting out of plaids and how to match them when you sew them. And it's a, it's a really unique uh, and I think foolproof way to sew the plaids and, and fail safe. So anyway, I think this would make a great dress. I think it'd make a great spring street. I also think it would make a fabulous pair of Hudson pants or any one of our pants, West End pants, Chesney pants, um, Hudson pants, Valencia pants, no side seam to match on those. So plaid pants are everywhere. And this has been the, not just season of plaids, but the era of plaids. I mean, we've been seeing plaids now for two, three, four years in everything from very dressy to very dressed down. Perfect with denim, by the way, with those blue jeans. All right, so this is a wonderful um, navy blue uh, cotton poplin. It's all cotton, 100% cotton. And it has that, the right weight for either one of these garments, either the Tosca dress or the shirt. And we, we discovered that people like navy in the last 30 days or so. So I got out the navy. But I also like it with this... Um, this plaid. I also like it with this plaid. So you could use, you know, how I showed the contrasting facings on the Tosca. You could do a little plaid on the inside as your facings. So just buy a little bit of it instead of the total yardage for the garment. This is uh, a white background with various shades of blue. Pale blue, aqua blue, navy blue. I, I think this is a really gorgeous plaid. Now this is an uneven plaid, so whenever you are buying a fabric like this, uh, you need to pay attention to what kind of plaid it is. And you're gonna have, wanna buy a little bit extra, you know, maybe a half a yard extra, something like that. So, because you're gonna be, need to be able to move your pieces around pretty substantially on a fabric like this to actually match the plaids. But I like it with the navy. I also like this with this, which is actually a paisley, but it reminds me of twigs or coral, that kind of motif. Uh, that I think is a really interesting, almost sea life uh, cotton print. And this is all cotton as well. This would make a, uh, 
either one, either the Tosca or the Spring Street. Now this is the fabric that's the closest that we had to this. It's a little different stripe, but it's very similar. This is just a narrow blue and white shirting. And it would look good with this. I've got strings all over me here. Uh, it would look good faced in this or this or even solid blue. So this is our blue range today. And we think because of our window off to the side here that these colors are rendering themselves pretty well on camera. We also have this wonderful uh, gray cotton that has a strie pattern to it. I think this would make a great Tosca dress, has the right structure to it, and it'd be fun to wear a, a fun uh, t-shirt under this in either a print or a fun color. And then I love this. This is a great stripe. The, uh, the Tosca dress, we've made it in stripes before, and it looks great in stripes. And in fact, you can, even this one on the dress form is a stripe, even though it's a tone on tone. But this is just natural colored with gray and a little bit of red to it. Very classic stripe. Now, over here, we're still wrestling with our colors on Facebook Live and our videos, and we're trying to get that all worked out. So this is showing up, we think, a little bit too yellow but we're going to plow through anyway. So the bottom one is a beautiful, just good royal blue in a cotton sateen. It's a very similar weight to the uh, magenta one that's on the dress form. This is actually the very same fabric that I use in black for my everyday Picasso pants that I've talked about so many times in black. This is the very same fabric. It has spandex to it, so this would make great pants as well. Picasso pants, any of our pants really, uh, even our Madrid pants, something that's a little bit slimmer. It's a great fabric. I thought that the, either one of them would be fun in a, in a great print. This is a linen print. Uh, it's a, not handkerchief weight, it's a little bit heavier than that, but it's not a heavyweight linen. But the, the pattern is really unique to it. And it does have various colors of blue, blueberry, red, red-orange, yellow, and gold, and, so, and an eggplant color as well. This is coming off a little bit yellow on the screen. Uh, it's actually just a classic animal print, but a very small one, kind of a cheetah color, uh, print, only very small. So the background is, is uh, off-white, and then we have brown and camel to this. This is drapier. I think this would make a really beautiful uh, Spring Street. I mean, a really classic, put this with neutral pants, and you have that whole tonal cream-colored look to it that's so popular right now. I think that would just be beautiful. Put some great buttons on it. We probably have the right buttons for it. This is coming off very yellow as well. This actually goes with this. Uh, I don't think it looks like it does go with it on the screen, but this is a fantastic plaid uh, that is uh, polyester, rayon, and a little bit of spandex. Again, great pants, but great dress or Spring Street. But this is gray and black and soft pearl gray. And again, just a beautiful, beautiful plaid. That's an uneven plaid as well, slightly, but just enough that again, you need to order just a little bit more of that. This was a beautiful fuchsia pink cotton plaid, woven plaid, not printed. It does have a little bit of lycra in it and just a good, in a way, Glen plaid, but modern colorways with the magenta, with black, and with white to it. So again, great Tosca dress, Spring Street, also great pants. Now this one, I pulled this out because I think that the Spring Street or the Tosca could be made to be sort of dressy. I mean, have some fun with it. Go to a party, go to a pool party, go to a, uh, a fun, even black tie event in something like this dress or make a beautiful blouse with some velvet or some satin pants. So this is a crinkled, pre-crinkled, pre-pleated fabric that is um, we must not know what this is, but it has to be polyester. And the reason I think that is because when you 
buy fabrics that are pre-pleated like this and the pleats stay in, it has to be polyester. If it's anything but that, then the pleats aren't going to stay. But I just think this would be magnificent. This would also make great pants, by the way. <laughs> but um, some of my favorite pants are pleated pants from various people. But anyway, so those are the fabrics. We also have this uh, same cotton broadcloth in a gray, a charcoal gray. So those are our fabrics today. And do we have any questions? Yes, so for the Tosca, can the arm's eye be brought up? Yes, the arm's eye can be brought up on this garment. Mm -hmm. Now, the pattern pieces are quite unusual. And so the front of the pattern piece is splayed out. You know, when you, when you splay this out, you can see that it gets wide. But there's definitely a, a curve to it, obviously, and you can raise that. Mm -hmm. Is the um, dress difficult to shorten for someone under 5'2"? No, I don't think so. Um, you would shorten it uh, through the center of the piece, above the pleats, and, and you might have to adjust the size of the pockets and the placement of the pockets, but this would be an easy pattern to shorten, and it'd be cute. And somebody did comment that they have raised the armholes and it worked out. Okay, so that's good. Um, is there a difference between the older printed Tosca and the download pattern? Not one bit. They are the same. Okay, for this is a Spring Street question. How tall is the back? Well, actually, I don't know. This might be a Tosca question. It doesn't say. How tall is the back collar? So many of the sewing workshop patterns have tall collars in the back. Um, she has a shorter neck, so she, maybe we can just show a detailed shot of it. Well, this seam is about at your neck, so right now this is probably another two inches above that. You can see on me where it, where it lands. You could probably yeah, you shorten, can shorten that. that. Yeah. You mm -hmm. could shorten it all the way around, or you could probably just shape that in the back. Mm -hmm. Well, and the Spring Street would probably be perfect. Because well, the it, Spring Street's perfect because there's no back to, right. the, <laughs> to the collar of this. Yes. So how would you shorten that if you're making something like the Sterling jacket, the, the back neck? How would I shorten the back neck of the Sterling? Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty short. Um, how much are you wanting to shorten it, I think, would be the point. Um, she doesn't say. Yeah, this is only about an inch and a quarter right now. I mean, I would just cut it down, uh, make entire, it narrower. Cut the entire collar down. Yeah, or leave it off. Mm -hmm. Just don't put the collar on it. Have an open neck. That's probably what I would do, actually, if you're really wanting to take quite a bit off. I think that would be better than making that collar super skinny. Someone said they cropped the Tosca into a vest, and they really oh, liked it. That's, that's fun. I would love to see a picture of that. You know, I think I remember, I don't know if you're the same person, but I remember seeing a picture of that, and that was cute. Sue Scott? Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This dress could be lengthened, too. I think it could be... Um, more mid-calf as well. Um, how do you think the, uh, a Tosca dress would look on an extra large body? I've seen it on extra large bodies and it's a great dress. Mm -hmm. Would you use linen for either the Spring Street or the Tosca? Absolutely. We ha I should have shown you the linen ones that we have. We have two or three made in linen, and they're wonderful. Uh, and the Spring Street, I, I don't know. Linen, to me, is, is just one of those fabrics you can just wear, you can just use for so many things. So I think it, both pieces would look great in linen.
How would you smooth out the pleated fabric for cutting out the pattern? You wouldn't smooth out the pleated fabric. You would let it lie on the table as it wants to be there and then cut it out. The striped cotton, um, the bolt that's on the floor, is that good for the Hudson pants? This would be great Hudson pants. Yep. Yeah, I love this thing. I think this is, I don't know, very wearable. But it'd make great Hudson's. Does it have any sort of drape or, or does it, um, does it hang? It's just a, I wouldn't say it has super drape to it. Um, but I've made many, a, this, is, this is like linen in a way, it's cotton, but it feels like linen and it probably behaves like linen. And I've made the Hudson pants in linen a million times, just shy of a million, but you know, a few times. I think it'd be great. My original Hudson's were in cotton, just about like this. Do you have the red crepe um, of the Spring Street? No, we do not. Um, I should have looked. We might have some red something, but I don't know. I know we have a red cotton sateen. We have red viscose linen. We have red ponte. That'd be great garment in ponte, by the way. Um, red crepe, mm, I don't know, probably not. Okay, can we see a close up of the navy paisley? Of the what now? Navy paisley. Oh, okay. And I can go through all of these and get a close yeah. up. Yeah, I didn't realize this was a paisley until I really uh, took a good look at it. Stripe is still hard to see, but yeah. Just the paisley, Just the plaid. It's kind of tricky to get the bottom plaid. Yeah, can we hold it up? That's the back side. Oh, now that's interesting. There is a brushed side to this that I didn't know. Like Interesting. I guess you can use either side. Huh. I love those colors. Yeah. Yeah, that blueberry blue and that spring green mm -hmm. together. Great combination. Okay, I'm going to go to this side. And I think from this angle, the colors are a little more accurate than okay. the way they were when I was further back. I wonder if this one is brushed. No. It does have a soft feel to it, as if it were a very lightweight flannel, but it's not wool. It looks like it is, but it's not. Kathy Davis used this to... Um, trim a black jacket. She used this for her binding, cut on the bias. Oh, nice. It was amazing. Hopefully I can have her bring that in one of these days mm -hmm. and we'll show it. This is, has a great feel to it. This is a, a viscose crepe. I think it's viscose. Yeah, viscose crepe. So it's got that super drape. It's not going to wrinkle a lot, if, if really much at all. Every once in a while, I just want to wear these kind of neutral colors, all cream and neutral. Sort of yearn for that. I wear a lot of black, <coughs> but every once in a while, I just want to not. <laughs> So the large scale print, the colorful one, would you use that for a gardenia? Oh, that would be a great gardenia. Mm -hmm. Yep. Dress or blouse. Dress or blouse, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Can you show the sample of the Tosca with the straight hem? Sure. The black one. So compare that to this. 
what's missing is we didn't do the pleats on this one. But the hem is still... But the hem is still shifted. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have to be. You could hem it in a normal way. Mm -hmm. Would you ever take off the pockets on the top? Yes, a lot of people leave those pockets off. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. Once. I've seen it once. <laughs> but yes, you could absolutely leave the pockets off. We do get that question a lot. That seems to be a yeah. common Well, not question. everybody wants those. I think it depends on the fabric as well. Um, and of course your body shape as to whether you put them on there or not. Does, does the ponte knit roll to or you, back? You can pieces? stop right there. I have no idea why I'm sorry. Ponte knit does not roll. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, it doesn't, so you don't have to talk about which direction because it doesn't roll. <laughs> ponte knit is an interlock, and interlocks don't curl. Jerseys curl. Interlocks do not. And ponte is essentially a double knit. Double knit's an interlock. Interlocks don't curl. Um, how much contrast fabric would you get for the facings of the Tosca? Well, you wouldn't need very much uh, in reality. Um, probably those, those sleeve pieces are curved. So you'd need, I would assume, about a quarter of a yard um, at least. I would probably get a half just to make sure because of direction. Mm -hmm. They're, it's an odd shape, and mm -hmm. they're bigger than you think and, they are. And this, is, if you have to cut that on the straight of grain, that's a good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably could cut this, depending on the pattern that you're using, that could probably be cut on the cross grain, as, because it's a facing. What is the top fabric under the black Tosca dress? Oh, that's a knit. Uh, the Trio t-shirt does need to be made in a knit. And so this is a jersey knit. And my black trio t-shirt is a jersey knit as well. It doesn't have to be a jersey knit. It can be an interlock, but it does have to be a stretch knit. OK, I don't see any other questions. All right. Well, we have news. I don't think even Aaron knows this. So the patterns that are on sale this week are the Spring Street, the Tosca dress, and the Trio t-shirt. And we have a tutorial that's on sale that is called Loops and Tubes. And in that tutorial, I am able to turn the tube and show it to you and show you how to do it properly. Maybe we should edit that whole thing out. <laughs> I don't know. People love it when things don't happen correctly on, on camera. But all the fabrics that I've talked about today for the next week are 25% off, not our normal 15. So I'm feeling in a good mood today. So, but the, so the patterns and those are 15 Patterns are 15% off. Mm -hmm. The tutorial is 15% off. And the fabrics are 25% off. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. It's great to have you. And we'll see you next week.